Continuing the series of weekly contest 289, here comes the second question in the queue. Minimum rounds to complete all tasks. My name is Sanjay Rodeja. I am working as a software developer for and I have total experience of 7 years. Without further ado, let's try and understand the question and then we will move on to the presentation where I'll explain this example as well as the algorithm to go about it. Here in this question, we are given an array of integers that represents the difficulty level of various tasks. What we need to do, we need to identify minimum rounds to complete all the tasks and in each round you can either complete two to three tasks of same difficulty. This is a very important point that you can only pick up tasks of same difficulty and you can either go for completing two tasks or three tasks. In case it is not possible to complete all the tasks, what do we need to do? We need to return minus one in those cases. Here they have provided us with this example. I'll be walking you through this example as well as the algorithm to go about it by the PPT. So let's quickly hop onto it. Lead code double two four four minimum rounds to complete all tasks. It's a medium level question on lead code and I totally feel the same. Also in case if you have any doubt understanding this question or you want to ask anything from me in general, please feel free to message me on the telegram group of coding decoded or the discord server. Both the links are mentioned in the description below. Let's get started with the same example. Here the tasks that are given to us are of the format 2, 2, 3, 3, 2, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4. And the first thing that comes to everybody's mind when they read this question is to create a frequency map of various difficulty levels that are specified in this task array. So let's do that. So how many times do we see 2? Uh, we see 2 3 times. So the difficulty 2 occurs 3 times in my map. So let's add it. Next we have 3. 3 occurs 2 times. So let's create another entry and the frequency for difficulty 3 turns out to be 2. Then we have 4 uh, that occurs 5 times. Now we need to identify the minimum number of rounds that are needed to complete all the tasks. And in each round you can either go for picking up 2 tasks or 3 tasks of same difficulty level. So what we are going to do, we will simply iterate over this map array. We will iterate over the frequency map and we will extract the value, the frequency corresponding to each difficulty and we will try to fit in how many minimum rounds will be needed provided we are either going for two tasks or three tasks. Since minimum is written, so we will obviously prefer picking up three tasks over two ones. Pretty simple and straightforward. So let's shoot for doing it. Uh, let's pick up the first entry and here we see that the, va the value or the frequency is three corresponding to difficulty level two. So we have three tasks corresponding to difficulty level two. Now obviously we will go for picking these three tasks together in one round and this is gone. Let's proceed ahead and here we have completed one round where we picked up all these three tasks. Next we have is two. So let's pull out this entry and the frequency turns out to be two. That means we will complete a two, ta two tasks in this round with difficulty three and the round count gets updated to two. So far so good. Now let's shoot for the next one where we see 5. The frequency is 5 corresponding to difficulty level 4. Now what can we do? We, are, we will obviously prefer picking up 3 tasks in one single round. So this is gone. This gets updated to 2 and 2 can be picked up another in another round. So the total number of rounds that we took here turns out to be 2. So 2 plus 2 gives me 4 and this becomes the answer. But how can we generalize this up? The tricky case here is to identify the minimum number of rounds that are to be taken in order to fulfill that particular frequency. So let's assume the frequency is F and we are interested in identifying the minimum value of X and Y here. So let's write it in the mathematical expression format. So here what we are interested in, we are interested in finding out the minimum values of x and y such that 2x plus 3y happens to be equal to frequency. And once we identify those x and y values, what we should do? We should add those together up and this will correspond to the number of rounds that we are in, that we will take in order to complete this frequency value. We need to identify the appropriate value of x and that of y. And while doing so, remember you want to maximize the value of y and minimize the value of x. Because as per the question, in each round you either have the option to pick up two tasks or three tasks and you'll go by the greedy approach where you'll be picking up three tasks if it is possible 
so that the minimum number of rounds are taken into consideration so let's shoot for it and let's take few examples so let's assume we have an n natural number and it can be represented in three formats the first one is 3p the second one is 3p plus 1 and the third one is 3p plus 2 and this natural number can be any number and this natural number will either fit in out of these three formats so if this format is it if n equals to 3p then it's pretty simple the value of x is 0 you can directly calculate the value of p and that will correspond to p rounds needed in order to complete the frequency n or f so you will take p rounds and in each round you will pick up three tasks of same frequency and you can simply reach the value n now let's talk about the second case which is very interesting here you can see that uh, it's of format 3p plus 1 so what those values would be it would be 4 it would be 7 it would be 10 it would be 13 and these numbers can be writ written slightly in a different way remember that 4 can be solved or achieved in two iterations of 2 2 so in two iterations of 2 2 each this can be achieved now comes the case where we have 7 and 7 can be achieved by two iterations of 2 2 and one iteration of 3 so the total number of rounds that we took happens to be 3 in nature and here we took two rounds of 2 to each let's shoot for this one and this can be taken into consideration by three uh, two rounds of three and two rounds of two next we have three rounds of three and two rounds of two so what we can conclude here if you carefully see then you will understand that we can use a simple formula to derive the number of rounds needed for in this entire list and what is that formula let's divide each number by 3 so what do you get you get 3 by 4 is 1 and you add 1 to it so uh, it's simple divide that number by 3 and add 1 to it so it will give you 2 here and this is expected 2 rounds are needed for achieving 4 let's try for this one 7 let's divide 7 by 3 what do you get you get 2 you add 1 to it and what do you get you get 3 3 is the expected answer for this number let's proceed here next we see is 10 you divide 10 by 3 you will get 3 you add 1 to it you will get 4 and the number of rounds needed here is again 4 let's shoot for the next one we have 13 you divide 13 by 4, 3 you will get 4 4 plus 1 is 5 and the number of rounds needed here is 5 so the formula turns out to be really simple you divide that number by 3 and add 1 to it so the number of rounds needed for handling 3p plus 1 cases turns out to be this one where the number itself is of the format 3p plus 1 you divide that number by 3 and add 1 to it now let's shoot for understanding the next iteration and let me just change the color of pen and let's take magenta in case the number of, is of the format 3p plus 2 what those numbers would be let's write those up it would be 5 it would be 8 it would be 11 it would be 14 so how can you derive 5 uh, 3 plus 2 so 3 into 2 plus 2 into 2 gives you 5 the number of rounds needed here turns out to be 2 let's proceed ahead next we see is 8 and what you're gonna do you'll use 3 2 times and then you will use 2 1 time so the number of rounds needed again turns out to be 3 2 plus 1 is 3 Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is 11. 3 into 3 gives you 9 plus 2 into 1. So the number of rounds needed here turns out to be 4. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is 14. 3 into 4 gives you 12 plus 2 into 1 gives you 2. So in total 3 into 4 plus 2 into 1. The number of rounds needed here turns out to be 5. And can we generalize the formula here too? The answer is yes. So what do you do? You divide that number by 3 and add 1 to it. So let's try and use this formula over here as well. So the number is 5. 5 by 3 is 1. Add 1 to it. So this is met. Again, 8 by 3 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 
3 it's still correct then we have 11 11 by 3 is 3 plus 1 that gives you 4 14 by 3 is 4 plus 1 gives you 5 so this formula is applicable here as well so whenever you see a number that is a format 3p plus 1 or 3p plus 2 you can say that uh, you simply divide that number by 3 and add 1 to it that many rounds will be needed so as to achieve that number in the minimum iterations and when the number is of the format 3p then it's very simple you divide that number by 3 and you will get the value of number of rounds needed so if you have understood this entire logic then you have understood the entire algorithm so let's quickly move on to the coding section and conclude it up in the first go what do i do i create the frequency map i iterate over the task carry and appropriately build up this map then i go ahead and create my answer variable for each entry set that i have i extract the frequency value and i check if it is divisible by 3 or not if it is not divisible by 3 then i update my answer to frequency by 3 plus 1 the formula that we derived in the presentation otherwise i update my answer to frequency divided by 3 and there is a small corner case that i forgot to tell in the presentation if my frequency happens to be equal to 1 i simply abort the process saying that it can't be achieved so one can't be achieved the number one frequency can't be achieved from two or three because uh, that's not possible because both of them are higher than one and let's shoot for completing the solution we simply return the ans in the end so let's try this up accepted great and the time complexity of this approach is equal to order of n and the space complexity is again equal to order of n this brings me to the end of today's session i hope you enjoyed it if you did please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thanks for viewing it have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from coding decoded i'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question but till then goodbye